Uh, the next item is item nine, the plan change for short-term accommodation. Uh, and Abby is presenting this. Uh, it's Mark Stevenson. I'll okay. be presenting this. I, I'll, um, if I can ask Chair to just give a brief summary to start. Yes, thanks, Mark. Great. Um, so proposed plan change forward to the district plan on short-term accommodation. It was initiated in response to significant growth in short-term accommodation in residential areas which has given rise to adverse effects on amenity, character and coherence of residential neighbourhoods. The current framework in the district plan doesn't provide for short-term accommodation in residential units, for example, Airbnb, which has acted as an impediment to the lawful establishment of such activities. And that framework's been viewed as inappropriate by commissioners on resource consent applications, but also by the Environment Court. While, uh, while visitor, visitor accommodation in a residential unit is currently a discretionary activity by which council can grant or decline consent, it's um, it was cited in legal submissions of council that it's been almost impractical to consent such activities because of the strict policies in the district plan at the moment. Proposed plan change four is notified, sought a balance of enabling the activity and recognition of the benefits, but also balancing this with managing effects on neighbourhoods. A distinction is proposed and was endorsed by the panel between hosted accommodation where the resident is present uh, versus um, unhosted accommodation and a more enabling approach is taken to hosted accommodation in recognition of the effects being less. Also worth saying that a tiered approach was proposed by council when it approved the plan change for notification with a controlled activity status for consent up to up to 60 nights per year, meaning that resource consent must be granted beyond 60 days to 180 nights, sorry, um, discretionary activity status was proposed and for which consent can be granted or declined and then above 180 nights it was proposed as non-complying um, non-complying activity status generally being for activities not anticipated by the plan the council's planner recommended for more than 60 nights per year that it be a discretionary activity and um, that remains the case in what the panel have recommended as a as a general statement the panel have accepted the position recommended by councils planner based on the evidence and submissions made over a week long hearing. There has been some uh, changes in the method for managing noise of late night arrivals and changes to the policy for managing residential coherence, but it otherwise main maintains consistency with what was put forward. The, um, the options available to the Council in respect of this report are outlined in paragraph 4.3 and the council in making a decision can't come to a different, um, can't propose a, an alternative resolution. Um, the options are to refer uh, to either approve the recommendations to adopt the panel's recommendations or to refer the matter back to the panel. If the council was to refer it back to the panel, um, it must be satisfied there's grounds to do so. Uh, and such grounds would be limited, including an issue with the uh, panel's re recommendations. Um, the panel, the council could otherwise appoint different commissioners, um, but that in itself presents risks. The third option is the withdrawal of the plan change, and it staff's recommendation that uh, you approve the recommendations, which have maintained the integ integrity of what was um, put forward in the notified plan change, and uh, staff think that the panel's recommendations are sound. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Um, are there any questions on this item? Okay, does someone like to move it? Okay, I'll, 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 could we just remove everything apart from the except? Oh, accepts the submission, sorry. I oh, will leave the submissions in there. Accepts the submissions. And then we can. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. Oh, we might take the bolt off too, I guess. Um, was, is there someone that would like to um, second it? Yeah, happy to second it, Mike. Thank you, Jake. Um, any debate? Yanni? Sorry, I just had my hand up for a, for a question. Oh, I asked that before. Um, Yanni, your question? Yeah, I, I was just like, given the changes um, that have been put in place, I, I guess I'm just interested to understand from staff's perspective what consideration was given to um, residential coherence, because that's one thing that came through early on in the discussion document uh, and, and some of the submitters um, raised the concern around the length of time that someone may be able to use an Airbnb. So this is, you know, like, for example, the central city where you've got neighbourhoods that if they predominantly had the Airbnb short-term accommodation rentals, then you lose a, a sense of neighbourhood because you don't have community coherent, residential coherence in terms of um, people in the community being there for an extended period of time. So I just was, I was just curious to understand what assessment, if any, was done in that regard around the impact that it would have, and especially in light of the changes. Uh, thank you, Councillor Johansson. Um, the, um, the panel received uh, submissions and evidence from a number of submitters on the um, effects that it can have on coherence with um, multiple units within a block or multiple section properties on a residential block being used for such accommodation. Um, the panel um, directed, uh, made some statements in their closing and encouraged um, the council to put forward some um, changes to the policy to explicitly address um, the impacts on residential coherence. And um, so the, the policies that the panel have recommended, um, one of which seeks to avoid uh, visitor accommodation in a residential unit where it's inconsistent with retaining, I'm just reading from the policy, uh, where it's inconsistent with retaining predominantly residential co character and coherence. So um, that policy um, use of the word avoid is, is strong um, and requires that there be retention of, um, of co res predominantly residential coherence. Um, the, the council did put forward um, some additions to define what that, how that would be me measured, um, and council's wording um, referred to at, at least half the block um, being used for uh, not being used for unhosted. Sorry, at least half the block being used for residential purposes. Um, what the panel ha have proposed as an alternative. To to the wording put forward by council is that each residential block retains a higher proportion of residential activities, but they've also um, included that each residential activity retains a higher proportion of residential neighbours. So it's not just um, how many are on the block, but also that any property that is used for short term accommodation also retains that high proportion of residential neighbours. So in that context, they've, um, they've been quite um, explicit with regards to coherence effects and have um, addressed that in their report. So in my view, they've adequately addressed the issue and um, and to the on and it's at a, from a staff perspective, it's sound. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there any debate? Uh, I'll, I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye or give me your thumbs. Thank you. Anyone opposed? Oh, Mike, I, I did have a debate. Sorry, <laughs> it all happened so quickly. Um, I'll just really quickly say if, if, if it, well, up to you. We have taken a vote. Oh, I haven't seen Carrie, Jake, so you, you're all right. You've, you've just got in. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Um, look, the introduction of Plan Change 4 brings unhosted Airbnb out of the shadows and into the light. And, and naturally, um, we have to make sure that when, when this regime is up and running, we enforce it appropriately so the community don't have to police it. And that's something they're quite worried about. One thing I wanted to highlight is that these restrictions apply to room nights advertised, not occupied. So with an average occupancy rate of around 50%, the community should take some comfort from this. Plan change four definitely doesn't go as far as the community would like. 
they were hopeful of a regime that would restrict this activity and protect inner city neighbourhoods. However, it's it's more than a good start and a lot of work has been put in and, um, and it, I'm absolutely certain that it will make the situation better and help mitigate the effects. Anything essentially has to be better than the status quo. Thank, thanks, Jake. I'm, I'm going to have to re-put it because your debate and support might have turned people off, but I, I don't think so. I hope not. Uh, all those in favour? Any opposed? Excellent. Oh, good debate, Jake. Um, we will now move.